Can this device change the way you draw? Well, we'll see that. This is a review of the Drawscope. I often receive requests to do reviews, and most of the time I refuse when I don't think that anyone would be interested. But this time this was different. This review was requested by fellow artist Jeffet Blanche. I'll put a link to his website in the description. He's an artist from Barcelona and he is the creator of the Drawscope. He sent me this one for free to do a review and uh, allowed me to give my honest opinion. So that's what I'm going to do. This is a review of the Drawscope. The Drawscope is a drawing device that allows the artist to superimpose optically the subject on the surface. It's a device that allows the artist to superimpose optically the model and the subject sort of in the same frame. So you have to use it with both eyes open and you put one eye in the hole right here. Now, the big question is, is this for cheating or not? I'll do the review and I'll give you my thought on this subject. Now, let's do a little bit of history to compare it with other drawing aids that have been used in the past. As far back as you can go, you'll see that artists were always interested in uh, optical device and optics in general, because that's what drawing is. Doing a drawing or a painting is like trying to represent and create an optical illusion of reality. Uh, one famous case was Leonardo da Vinci. Uh, he was very interested in the camera obscura, for instance. The camera obscura is a big box, a dark box, in which the, the light goes through a tiny hole or a lens. It's then inverted and projected at the back and you can just trace over the pictures that's projected. Now, I don't think that Leonardo da Vinci ever used the camera obscura himself, but he was interested in the process. And this debate on what artists use the camera obscura at some point in the history of art. I mean, it's complicated, but you have to know that it was there and some artists have used it. Next, you have the camera lucida, which is not even a, a camera because there's no room. It's just a special mirror that's designed to help you superimpose the model and the picture. With the camera lucida, you have a, a mirror that's shaped at a 45 degree angle. So through this mirror, you would see a superimposition of the subject and the surface. So basically the camera lucida, you clamp it to a table uh, and it has to be very steady. If you move, you lose the, the entire thing and you just have to trace the contour of the image that's mirrored. So now what's the difference with the Drawscope? The Drawscope uses the fact that we have two eyes and that each of them can see a different picture. It's exactly like, I don't know if you've used this trick as a kid, you put a cardboard tube in your hand and it looks like your hand as a whole. So it's conceived sort of like a periscope if you think about it. But the thing is that the, the mirrors will allow your brain to see and perceive both pictures superimposed. It's happening mentally and intellectually, which means that there is some getting used to. Big difference with the camera lucida. To me, this is not a tracing device. So if you buy this, thinking, oh, I'm going to cheat and I'm going to just trace everything, to me it doesn't work that well. If you use it as a camera lucida, it's going to fail miserably, really, because it's not made to be just, just a tracing device. It's here to allow you to make comparative measurements. So this is how it works. You place the subject and the model next to each other at eye level. It works really well if you know how to use the side size method. You open both eyes and adjust the mirror to place the picture of your model in the middle of your surface. Now you check the drawing and see if there's any corrections that you need to do. You make your corrections and that's it. And you repeat the process every time you have doubt. This is what I'm saying. This is not for tracing. This 
is for comparing and checking the accuracy of your drawing. If you're trying to use it for tracing, you'll seriously have big headaches. If you're using it to compare from time to time to check the proportion, maybe you have a doubt. Is this high enough? Is this wide enough? Uh, are the proportions correct? Can I check it? How can I check it? You can use that. If you want to just use it constantly like this and trace over what you're seeing, it's not going to be effective. It works with both eyes and uh, you can adjust the level and the height by tilting it like this at an angle. It's uh, pretty stable. I really thought it would be more shaky, but it's pretty stable, I have to say. Other things you can do with it is compare colors because it will allow you to take your model and make it closer to your subject. So you can make the color, put two colors next to each other and say, okay, this needs to be darker, this needs to be lighter, and you can compare, do some comparative measurements. Or you can even use it to sort of preview your composition and understand where everything is going to fit on your surface before you even start. You can also use it on a tripod. You can put it on a tripod and put it at the back of your studio and check it from time to time, put it in the back and, and go back to this place and, and use it uh, on a specific spot. This way it doesn't move, so that's pretty handy. Let's go over the pros and cons. Pros, what I liked about it. Now, cons, there are some limitations to this product. So who is it for? I think it's mostly for art students. It cannot replace critique by an actual instructor, but it can help you sort of give you the same idea. An instructor, a professional artist that would come behind you and say, this needs to be wider, this needs to be higher, this needs to be more to the left. You can have this sort of information with the draw scope. So conclusion, this is something that I would have loved back then when I was learning, especially when I was learning on my own because I didn't have any ways to compare my drawings to my models at the time. But this tool can help you check the proportions in no time and that's great for that. This is something I don't see myself using that much because right now I, I think I have a pretty good sense of the proportions but uh, this is something that I would have greatly appreciated earlier in my, in my career, so to say. This is something that you use from time to time to check the proportions of your drawing, make a comparison, check the accuracy, and then move on with the rest of your painting or the rest of your drawing. I compare that to a metronome for a musician. Like you don't use the metronome when you're actually playing at the concert, but at some point when you're learning, you, you need to use a metronome to be sure that you have the right rhythm. Well, this thing can also help you greatly improve your sense of proportions. So that's something that you might want to use. It is mostly a learning device. It is something that you'd use as a student. Now, very important, I have to say that this is helpful but it does not replace actual hard work and experience. You have to do the work. It's not a cheating device because it doesn't help you trace and simplify everything. It makes things easier if you're really willing to learn, but after that, you have to do the work. All right, I'll put all the links in the description. You can check uh, Jafet Blanche's website and you can check the Droscope website if you want to get one. And that's it for this video. I hope you liked this review. As always, guys, uh, have fun painting, have fun drawing, and I'll see you for the next one. Bye.